And welcome back to the State Champs High School Hockey Report. I'm Jonathan Kidd along with Sean Belize. And Sean, where are we at today? Fun time out here in Livonia at Eddie Edgar Ice Arena. Uh, the second now annual MIHL KLAA Challenge. Uh, just a great day of high school hockey out here in Livonia. High School Hockey Report is presented by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. It is also brought to you by the MHSA and it's also brought to you by National Coney Island. You can vote in the Player of the Year contest at statechampsnetwork.com. We have five players in our top ten competing in the uh, MIHL KLA Showcase this weekend. And I'll tell you what, John, you know as well as I do, you have a lot of uh, coaches saying keep an eye on this guy, keep an eye on that guy. So we're certainly keeping an eye on, on some players, and maybe we'll make an adjustment in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, But the one thing, we want to stay true to the process and, yeah. and, and talk to all the coaches involved and, and, and see if we can come to some kind of consensus. And remember, once again, you can go to statechampsnetwork.com and cast your vote. All right, let's get right into it. The opening game of the MIHL KLAA showcase was the was Canton taking on Gross Point North. Canton came out on top, five to two. Yeah, Canton is a really good story because I mean they they've improved leaps and bounds. And it was funny in talking to some people uh, before this tournament. That was one of the things that you know we had mentioned is, hey, this Canton team's they and, and we talked about it in our podcast yeah, last yeah. week. This Canton team's got a few nice wins. They got another one today uh, against GPN. Joining us now on the High School Hockey Report is Canton head coach John Bartle. John, uh, welcome to the High School Hockey Report. Thank you, I appreciate it. Congratulations on the win today. How do you guys came out today to, win, to get this win? Well, uh, I thought the boys came out a little flat the first four or five minutes. Uh, then they kind of got their legs underneath them and um, uh, I think our, our, our movement was well. We skated really well today, uh, moved the puck around, used each other pretty well. Um, really did a good job in the offensive zone, controlling the puck for a long time. Talk about the player, your goalie, Jackson Taylor. Jackson had a great game. Uh, he started off uh, not getting a whole lot of shots, but uh, he did get some uh, quality scoring chances on him, a couple breakaways, and uh, he stood he stood tall. Uh, a couple popped in at the end in the third period. Um, neither one of them were his fault, but uh, he was uh, he was right on. He was on point. Now you guys are like a quarter of the season done so far. What do you guys think you guys need to improve on to get to move forward in the season? Uh, I think um, our defensive play, uh, getting the puck up and out of the zone, uh, we're having a little problem with that. Uh, we'll be working on that in practice quite a bit. Um, and, and, and being more physical. I think uh, the team could get a little more physical. And just how special is it for you guys to play in this KLA MIHL challenge? It's a great opportunity. Uh, you know, the, the teams uh, are evenly matched normally. Um, you know, it, uh, two probably two of the best uh, conferences in the state. So uh, I, I think it's a good it's a good opportunity. I, I, I thank Dave for uh, for doing it, and uh, um, hopefully it'll be a tradition. We'll be able to keep doing it for a long time. All right, Ken, with the big 5-2 win over Gross Point North today, I was joined with John Barrow here. And thank you for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's go to the next one. We had Port Huron Northern taking on Novi, and Port Huron Northern came out on 3-2. to two. Yeah, you know what? Uh, MIHL responded, and uh, by all accounts, John, you were yeah, here yeah. early. I, I came a little later in the afternoon, but by all accounts, it was a heck of a hockey game, and, and uh, you know, it was close, and uh, certainly, you know, we've talked about the young team that is uh, Novi and, you know, continuing to grow on everything. I'm looking forward to seeing Port Huron Northern myself, but 1-1 uh, one, one at that point in time in this challenge. I'm joined by Port Huron Northern coach Daryl McCarroll. Thanks for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thank you for being here. So 3-2 to two today, so what stood out in this game? Um, we played a solid team game today. Uh, I thought that we were short a few guys and uh, we wanted those guys to go out and just execute our game and uh, I thought that everybody did their job. Everybody rotated where they need to be and obviously we had a great uh, goaltending uh, performance by uh, Kyle O'Brien. And talk about Kyle there those last few minutes there. They were getting the pucks on in those last few minutes. Kyle did an outstanding job and it was funny. We, I talked to our goalie coach and we've been rotating our goaltenders all the way through the year and I've been just asking one of them to, to step up and be our number one and uh, Kyle did a nice job today and, and it's definitely shown that he, he wants to be a number one. And then at the end of the game, they wanted us to call a timeout and I kept telling our guys, we're not going to call a timeout for their, yeah. their power play, so uh, we're going to fight through this and Kyle was there to help us out. How does this win build momentum for you guys going the rest of the season now? 
Oh, this is this is a huge win for us. I mean, we're we're under 500. I mean, the teams we play, I mean, they're some of the best in the state. But the kids, because we're so young, we have 11 freshmen and sophomores on the team. It, it, winning always fixes things, and and you can keep telling them that they're getting better every day. But to show a victory on the on the scoreboard and them playing together really instills that idea: is, hey guys, we stick together, we can win a lot of games. And talk about the MIHL; it's just the toughest competition. You guys play <laughs> not just you guys, but every team. It's just a dogfight every game. Oh yeah, I mean our first two games of the season, we played Catholic Central the first game and two days later we played Cranbrook and then uh, we backed that up with Brother Rice, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's and Flint Powers and those were our losses this year and uh, other than one game I thought that we played really well in those games. Talk about you guys being here for the MIHL KLH showcase. I, I think this is a great idea. I, I, you know, they approached us I think a couple of years ago about having this challenge before Christmas. You know, obviously we have our showcase, yeah. the MIHL showcase in early February but uh, they offered to play and, and we thought it was a great idea and we're seeing that the scouts are showing up and it shows that our kids that we can get them to where they need to be. So uh, I, I think uh, them inviting us to, to do this and them handling it every year, I think is a great advantage and everybody finds out just before Christmas and where they stand. All right, so Port here on Northern with a 3-2 win over Novi today. Thanks again to Daryl McCarroll for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next one, the KLA takes the lead when Howell took out Gross Point South three to one. You know, it's interesting because the Highlanders are another team that we talked about, and I'm looking forward to going out there. I think I'm going to be out there this Tuesday, actually, uh, when they take on uh, Plymouth, going to make the drive out there. That might be one that surprised some people, you know, because uh, Bobby's done so, such a good job with GPS, and they're still a good team. There's yeah. no doubt about that. But I think Howell really starting to put their name back on the map. That's a big win here today. All right, so Howell with the 3-1 victory. I'm here with Rocky Johnson, the coach of Howell High School. Welcome to the High School Hockey Report. Appreciate you having me, John. Thank you. Big win for you guys today. Just talk about how you guys came through for the victory today. Well, you know, we got a, we got a great team that, uh, coming back. we got a lot of uh, guys that are returning. And, and, you know, when they get together and they really get something in their heart, they want to go, you know, the first to the puck, they win their battles, um, and they play as a, as a team, it, things work out. I thought the key of this game was when you guys were down uh, on a five-on-three penalty kill. Your goalie, Ethan Ryan, came through. You know, I'll tell you what, Ethan's a comeback goalie, right? He, he uh, played with us last year, uh, didn't get a lot of opportunities. And this year, he's just really determined to, to take the job and just own it for the entire season. And, and I'll tell you, w without him playing the way he does, I, I don't think we have the same outcome. Talk about the move to Division Two this year. Well, you know, it actually came to a shock to us. We really weren't, didn't know that was happening. Um, but we asked the question why, and, and as it came back, you know, we had a lot of unified teams um, that have come together this season, and it kind of moved us down. You know, listen, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. Michigan hockey's tough. Uh, so I don't know that it matters, the division, and other than the fact that uh, I think uh, Division Two is going to be really, really tough. Talk about being here at the MIHL KLA showcase. You know, I got to get what a fantastic opportunity, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I believe last year was the first year, and then we come out this year. What a great opportunity, you know, to get everybody in the same rink, you know, have the MIHL and us and the KLAA. What a great opportunity to play teams. I think um, the folks here that created this thing and, and, and have worked hard, I mean, the volunteers, it's yeah. amazing. And lastly, just talk about in the last like probably 10 years of Livingston County hockey. Howell in the Division One final, you had Brighton in the final, you had Heartland. Just talk about the quality that's in Livingston County over the year. Great group of kids, really hardworking, great families, um, and, and then it's producing great teams. All right, so Howell with a 3-1 victory over Gross Point South. I was joined here by Rocky Johnson. Thank you very much for joining John, us on the High School me. Hockey Report. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we talked a little bit about Warren De La Salle in our last podcast. They took on Livonia Churchill 3-1. to one. Yeah, De La Salle is, is loaded. I mean, they're, they're one of a few teams that could get it done all the way in Division III. Uh, Churchill played one heck of a game. I got a chance to see a good portion of that game. I'm going to say it again. Their, their sophomore goaltender, uh, Bryant Riley, he's going to give them a chance in any game. He's really been a, a spark plug for that team, no doubt about it. And, and he kept them in that game. In a, in a position, you know, to may, perhaps pull the upset, but in the end, yeah. too much uh, pilots, yeah. and they end up winning that one three to one. So Warren De La Salle with a three one win over Livonia Churchill today. I'm joined by Warren De La Salle head coach Sean Clark. Thanks for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Yeah, thank you very much. Three to one today. What happened today that got you guys to win today? 
um, you know, our power play was good early. We, we capitalized on early opportunity, um, had them down, and then um, yeah, I thought we controlled the better part of the play. We outshot them pretty heavily today, but um, our discipline got away from us for a little bit. But uh, in the end, we, we battled and competed. We blocked shots, and that was the difference. You guys are in the very tough Division Three this year. Yeah, you got you guys, UD Jesuit, Cranbrook, Flint Power. So you can just say the name. Just how tough Division Three is going to be once the playoffs start? It's going to be really tough. I mean, we're we haven't seen the regionals come out yet, but um, you know we're expecting UD probably being our regional, and they're they're an excellent team. We lost them the only time we play them. We see them again Friday, and um, you know Cranbrook's always a tough team. They skate well. Um, you know they're going to want to play hard for their coach. You know Andy probably being his last year, and um, you know there's just, there's a lot of a lot of roadblocks to get to where you want to be. So it's 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 a it's a tough division this year, and it's it's a deep division too as well. And you know we're excited about. Um, you know, competing against some really good teams. Now, I talked earlier with Daryl from uh, Port Huron Northern. Just talk about how tough the MIHL is each and every night. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there's not really many nights off. It's, that's it's one of the things, so it hopefully does prepare us for the playoffs that way. But, you know, we, we, uh, we, we like it. You know, we, we, we go against the best competition in the state um, on, you know, a weekly basis, and it makes our team tougher. There's nights we struggle. There's nights where we're successful. But, um, you know, all in all, it's, it's, we want to be playing the best competition every day. And then talk about just being here today at the yep. KLA MIHL Showcase. Yeah, that's a great event. Um, it's uh, something, obviously, the second year. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people here as far as scouts and, uh, you know, uh, club teams from universities. There's, I've seen a couple USHL teams here, North American League teams. It's a great opportunity for our players. It's, it's, it's bringing some of the best teams in the state, two really good conferences together, and it's, it's really putting our best foot forward as, as Michigan high school hockey, and it's, it's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great benefit for not only us, for our program, but for the conference for the, for the, and for high school hockey in, in, in general. What do you tell kids to come out and play high school hockey? Yeah, we, we talk about the opportunity. We, um, you know, especially because, you know, I, I was my, my second year at De La Salle. We had a USHL draft pick last year. We had, you know, Jordan's playing North American League right now. And, um, you know, we sell it as an opportunity for guys to move on to the next level. Um, but we also sell it as an experience, too, as well. There's, there's nothing like putting on your school sweater. Um, it's, it's, it's something that's very powerful when kids do it for the first time. And, and, and seeing these guys come from different organizations and travel and places like that, um, you know, they, they love high school hockey. You know, three, four weeks in, they're, they're, they're enthralled, and, and, and it's, it's such a great experience for our young men. All right, so Warren Dale Sal with a 3-1 win over Livonia Churchill. Thank you, Sean, for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. We had a great ending to the UAD Jesuit Northville game, 2-1, 25 seconds left in the game. Ben Charbonneau gets the game winner. Well, you know what? I mean, that's part of the reason why you put a guy like that uh, on your, your top ten list. Uh, you know, the propensity to score a big goal. I I'll tell you, you, you got to give a tip of the cap to Northville because I I'm not sure how many people thought that Northville had that game in him. Gordy Brown's doing a good job with the Mustangs. I think that's a team that's going to continue uh, to get better. Uh, a heck of a battle. As you mentioned, John, it, it seemed like it was 1-1 for a long time in that game, but big-time players provide, uh, you know, big-time moments uh, when the opportunity presents itself and certainly that's what Ben Charbonneau did. So UAD Jesuit comes out with a two to one win over Northville. I'm with head coach Rick Bennett here. Rick, uh, thanks for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thanks for having me, my pleasure. Talk about that end of the game and that goal by Ben Charbonneau. It was an incredible goal by Ben. He uh, got the puck inside of the blue line and uh, did, did one of his patented little moves there and got a great shot off. and. Uh, couldn't get a lot of penetration, couldn't get a lot of shots throughout the game. Hats, hats off to Northville for the way that they played. And talk about your guys' effort today uh, to get that win. Uh, I think uh, possession-wise, shot-wise, we had good possession and good shots. Uh, we just didn't get them from good scoring places. And they blocked an awful lot of shots, and, and we shot into their pads an awful lot as well. What does it mean to play in this KLAA MIHL showcase? Uh, this is a tremendous, tremendous weekend of, of hockey. Well, it's a one day of hockey, but it's, it's almost like a whole weekend, like the uh, showcase down in Trenton. And uh, Dave Mitchell put together a, a great program uh, along with all of the KLAA teams. And now you guys are like a quarter of the way through the season so far. Yes. What have you seen so far and what you want to improve on? Um, our play without the puck. Our players that don't have the puck are not getting themselves in position well enough uh, to, to have our player that has the puck get it to them. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that players in general have to learn to get better at. And that's what we're going to spend a lot of time working on. So UAD Jesuit comes out with a 2-1 to one win over Northville. Thank you very much, Rick, for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thank you very much. My pleasure. 
Hey, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the rest of the slate. Boy, there were some exciting games later on out here at Eddie Edgar, and we'll have it for you right here on the High School Hockey Report. National Coney Island is serving up what you love, fast, fresh, and friendly, like our award-winning Coney, Honey, or Handcrafted Burger. So you can get what you want when you want it. National Coney Island, your craving is calling. There's an old saying, you can never have too many officials. The age of the average official is 52 and getting older all the time. We're constantly recruiting new people, younger people to join us. After you register with the MHSAA, look on the website to find an officials association near you. They'll put you in a position to succeed as an official. We all learned a lot from high school sports, and officiating is a great way to give back to the game. There's help wanted, just whistle. Touchdown, And welcome back to Eddie Edgar Arena in Livonia, Michigan. My name is Sean Belegian. A pleasure to have the head coach, and if you will, the architect of this great event out here in Livonia. An idea is only an idea until somebody made it happen. This guy made it happen. The head coach of Livonia Stevenson, uh, Dave Mitchell. Uh, first of all, coach, this has just been a fantastic afternoon for hockey. Year two of this tournament. I mean, from a hockey standpoint, forget about the coaches, forget about the teams. This is just great for our game. Absolutely, it absolutely is. Uh, but who had the idea? Remember who had the idea right here? Shaw Legion, everybody. He was the one with the idea. Um, so we took his idea and we, we ran with it. But absolutely, you know, it just came about. You have so many great teams, so many great programs playing games all over the Detroit area. Why not put them in the same building? And to do a day like this, and look, and, and you guys were all over it, to have a day like this in, in, in Metro Detroit, have the Gaylord thing and the, the D3 showcase up there, to have, you know, games going on in Calumet, the west side of the state. High school hockey, it's a really good day for high school hockey today. Well, this is one of the interesting things about the game. I mean, you've seen a progression of some of, some of these tournaments. I mean, just in the time that you and I have been doing things. Uh, you mentioned Gaylord, Traverse City. You know, what happens at Cranbrook over Thanksgiving? More and more teams are saying, hey, let's do something like this. Let's make it an event. And, and let's be honest, I think the entire high school community is reaping the benefits. No doubt. You, you mentioned Traverse. We go to Traverse City in January. That's grown to 20 four teams at the North South Showcase this year so we're looking forward to that but again it's just so so such a positive atmosphere and a positive environment and you know the competition's great and you watch the level of hockey and especially a day like today right the two leagues teams are, are, are placed against each other that that are about the same places and I think every game for the most part today has been competitive and so it's it's just exciting it's exciting to be here it's exciting to be part of it and it's a really good time to be part of high school hockey as a coach, as a player. I mean, kids look into hockey, you know, as have different options. And I think the kids that look to come into high school hockey now look and say, wow, I can be part of something, you know, pretty big time. And so it's, it's really exciting right now. This is our Coach's Corner segment of the show. He's Coach David Mitchell from Livonia Stevenson. Coach, you know, one interesting thing that I see, listen, there, there's bragging rights. Let's get it out of the way. KLA, MIHL, we know that. But the one thing that I've seen is between the games, before the games, the camaraderie between the coaches. I mean, you know, it really, sometimes it's a cliche, but it just seems like the oars are in the water and everybody's rowing in the same direction. I tell you, and I don't want to get cliche, but I will tell you flat out. And, and I, people have different options with the AAA and the high school thing. And I spent years in AAA. The difference is exactly that. The difference when you come to an event like this, when you come to into the world of high school hockey, you're all pulling in the same direction. You're all trying to do the same thing because you realize if the other programs are better, your program will also get better and reap the benefits of it. So it's the camaraderie is great. The coaches really legitimately work together through the Michigan High School Coaches Association. You know, with, I mean, you know, Jeff Fleming's our president here, but Don Wright was here today to see that, who's our executive director. Like, there are so many good things coming on. And, and you bring up that point, the camaraderie, but there is 
really good coaching in Michigan high school hockey, really good coaching. And we work together, we, we, we work for the kids and, and try to move them, the players on and better our programs. We had a great coaches clinic where it's about professional development. You know, I'm an educator and so it's all about professional development. That's what our coaches clinic was, right? Like we all, we had speakers in and we all did, I think, a really good job of how can we get better to make our programs better, which will make the product better, which will make it, you know, allow it to grow. So it's one of those things, the old cliche, right? The grass isn't necessarily greener on the other side. It's greener where you fertilize it. It's greener where you water it. And right now, we're watering and fertilizing what we have, and, and, it's, and, and it's growing. You know what's interesting? If you're a student athlete out there, and, and perhaps you're debating, and you're asking yourself the question, why high school hockey? One of the interesting things, Coach Mitchell, you and I have talked about it many times over the past few years, but I, I think today is the proof in the pudding the amount of scouts here today. There, there were guys from everywhere, and, and trust me, a lot of guys I know from other jobs, you know so many guys, there are a lot of scouts here taking in all the action at Eddie Edgar today. Yeah, and, and that's why a weekend was like this was imperative, right? A weekend like this to allow them to come, because we have the Trenton Showcase and the Chelsea Showcase, we have those things later in February, but we have to get our guys out to the scout, scouting community a little bit earlier. So to get this and put this out there a little bit earlier, I, I think, again, I, I think it's a great day, it's a great time of year. We're talking about maybe doing something even, even at the beginning of the year, maybe to really do this. Because you mentioned, why high school hockey, right? It's not just about the opportunity to play for your school and your community and program. There are legitimate players here that want to play on, that can play on, that are doing well playing on, and those numbers are only going to go up. They're only going to get better as more and more, you know, you see some of the players here today, the scouts are taking notice, and, and it's, again, it's growing, and, and I'm just happy to be part of it. I'd be remiss before we let you go if I didn't bring up uh, your team today. It was, folks, a fantastic high school hockey game this afternoon. Two high-caliber teams, uh, two teams ranked in the top ten in the state. Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Livonia, Stevenson, you guys come out on top, 3-2. Uh, to two. What a great hockey game. What was your takeaway from that game? Just really what you just said. I mean, it was a really good high school hockey game. There's been a couple games that now we've been part of, and, and to put our kids in that situation and play a game like that, the takeaway is Orchard Lake's good. They have a lot of speed up front. I know they're, they've lost a lot of one-goal games, and they've been close, and and but they have so much tradition, right? And they're such a tradition-rich program. So we just love the opportunity to be able to compete with those teams and play against those teams. And, and I think that we're continually doing our best to try to get mentioned in the same breath as, as teams like that. So it was, you know, I think there was a lot of special teams, a lot of penalties, but it happens. And, and their speed gave us fits at times. And so our kids battle back. I can tell you, I mean, ultimately as a coach, I'm extremely proud of our guys, extremely proud of the effort that our guys gave. They knew. I mean, they're happy with with getting coming out of here with the win against a team like Courtier Lake. So it makes the day better, right? It makes everything you know make make tomorrow better. But ultimately, it was a good day for everybody. I think that was here today. Yeah, fantastic day, no doubt about it. Livonia Stevenson knocks off Orchard Lake St. Mary's three to two. One of a slew of great games out here at Eddie Edgar Arena. This is the guy that made it happen. Coach Mitchell, continued success. Merry Love this Christmas guy. to you Merry and your Christmas, family. happy holidays. Love this guy. Did I get you? Did More I get of the that? show. <laughs> that's that's it. I wanted to go out with a bag that way. Thanks for everything you guys do. Stay chill. Give me a kiss. He gave me a kiss. <laughs>isn't possible without the fine work of the Coaches Association in this great state. 
and of course the president of the Coaches Association, longtime coach in the high school ranks, currently an assistant at Brother Rice is Coach Fleming. And Coach, really appreciate you taking the time. And days like this kind of show what can happen when so many coaches are rowing in the same direction, so Absolutely. to speak. And to me, just in the past five years, all over the state, it seems like everybody's going in the same direction. Yeah, these days are really special, right? And and uh, we want to thank you guys. Obviously, I think that there's a great relationship that's been formed here, and we want to continue that and support this. It's, it's great to get information out around the whole state, and uh, it's great for the kids. It's great for the programs all, all the way around. So, but yeah, I mean, days like this are are, are super important. There's more and more every year. Um, and they, they have meaning, and, and uh, it's, it's a great day, really, for hockey all the way around. Yeah. You know, for people that don't know the Coaches Association, I mean, this is something that really has expanded. I mean, from a few guys, sure. uh, maybe based in one area or the other, you guys have, I, I guess the best way to say it, outposts all over the state. Kind of let people know what you guys are doing with the Coaches Association Yeah, now. so the Coaches Association, is, it's an eight-year commitment. So it's an eight-year commitment um, going through and... and um, uh, it's been a four-man unit for, for a long time um, with the ability of, um, uh, you know, uh, video conferencing now. Uh, we, we expanded this year. Uh, we have uh, uh, representation up in the UP, uh, in Traverse City, um, Grand Rapids area, and in mid-Michigan. And uh, so we've gone from four to eight, and we're looking to uh, continue to expand. And we've had... Um, you know, some conversations, do we get one person from each league as a representative in, in there, which would be which would be fantastic. Um, it, it just, um, it gets more people involved. Well, and, and information, no, and information passed. And, and to me, you know, that to me, that's the biggest jump in, in terms of the coverage now. And of course, we welcome all media coverage to this game. I, you know, I'm not going to sit back and and, and play uh, the role of provincial guy and say, no, we got them. We want everybody to come out there. One of the things that you guys have done is is today it's more centralized than it has been in the past. Tell everybody, in case they're unfamiliar, about the hub. I, I think the hub is just such a great idea. And it really, like the name suggests, it's become a hub for what you guys are doing in Michigan high school hockey. Right. So it's a centralized place to, to get all the information out uh, of all the teams, players, news, things that, that's happening around the state. I believe we're the only sport that has a single uh, website or hub. It's the mihshockeyhub.com. And it's fantastic, and, and it, 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 it's a great place to share information. We can get news on there from around the state that are covering teams. We've got a lot of stuff from the UP, and David up there is really doing a great job of sending stuff down. So uh, the Hockey Hub is huge, and, and it's just growing. And we use it more internally uh, as well. We started doing our all-state voting on that, and the all-state ballot and final votes were on that this last year, and that helps for coaches. That helps put everything. And, and for guys that, that have to count, this stuff we can run a report now instead of uh, counting stuff. So, technology, right? I can. Well, listen. Uh, speaking of technology, I can tell you from my vantage point, following games now. I mean, you see yeah. scores up there right away. I don't know how it happens. I've always wanted to ask you that. So here's. I mean, is yeah. this a case where coaches come in and are doing that? How does that happen? Because yeah. you know, before coach, there might be a day or two before you find out that score from wherever the case may be. The scores are getting in there now. We do a lot of that. In, internally, mm -hmm. Mitch and I and Mark, Bob, uh, we'll go through and we'll throw, uh, uh, I'll go on Twitter at home. I do have a life, but, but you know, I'll, I'll sit there and, and uh, I'll search the Twitter feeds and if I see a score and something's not up there, then, I, then I'll plug it in on a quick score. Some people are taking advantage of the live scoring, so mm -hmm. they have somebody there live scoring it, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, we don't have the technology and all the rinks that allow for, for that to happen um, all the way across the board. But, you know, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll search through it. And then the coaches. The coaches are, are being um, much more diligent about putting the information in in a timely manner. So that's another thing, too. You know, the Coach Association, you know, I think we have 100 and, I don't know, 145 teams that, mm -hmm. are, that, that programs out there. I think we have about 132 that are actually in the association. And those numbers have really been fantastic, uh, yeah. which is 
showing buy-in from them as well. You know, one of the cool things is, again, we're, we're talking to Coach Fleming, the president of the uh, Coaches Association. One of the cool things that, that is going on is in the past few years, listen, the tournament is a grind. You, you've you seen it in, in every facet yeah. all the way to the top. The tournament is a grind, and I've heard so many coaches around the state say over the course of, heck, the last 15 years, It'd be great if we could expand the playoffs, if we could make it a little bit longer. Yeah. That's something that's in the work now, maybe expanding it, correct me if I'm wrong, from two and a half weeks to three weeks. How close is that right. to reality? Yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, we, we're, we're going through, and we've, we've been talking about this for a couple years now. Knock on wood, I believe it's something that's going to happen, hopefully for next year. And uh, we go through, and, and uh, we add another weekend of, 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 of play in there. And that allows, you know, maybe... A, uh, a regional uh, you have two games in your regional to get to the final maybe that's on a weekday and a weekend but then you have the quarterfinals on, on a weekend now you know I would love to uh, to have an event like this for the quarterfinals where all the quarterfinals are, are played in one location uh, I think it'd be great for high school hockey I think it'd be great for uh, for, for, for everything I, re I really do I think it'd be a fun day uh, all in one place, and then of course we have the finals on the on, on the last weekend. So, and, and the other part of that too is you know you're asking these kids to go through and and the tournament, you know from start to finish is about 11, 11 to thirteen days, and um, it's the most important games of their lives, yep. right? And they go through and, and and they grind it out. We don't do that during the season, right? And 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 we don't we don't play more than three games in in, in a week during the season um, on a regular basis. So it it allows. Uh, for a little more time to maybe rest and reload and prepare, right? Football, you have a week to prepare in between each game. With us, you know, you can go uh, a, a, a Tuesday, uh, a Wednesday, or a Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Thursday, Saturday, and, 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 and that's the state playoff run. So it's a grind. You know, it's, it's amazing, Coach, because, you know, there are so many things that I know are in the hopper that, that you guys would like to do, and certainly we'll, we'll let you know about a lot of that when we have the time. Do you ever sit back on a personal level and sit back and say to yourself, wow, look where this has gone? I mean, the high school hockey game, I, maybe it's cheesy, but I'm going to say it anyway, it's never been healthier. Do you sit back and go, wow, look what we've done and how much more we can do? It's been a really a team effort. I, I mean... You go through and you think uh, about where the association started. I believe Andy started the association many, many years ago. He really starting this, and, and it's come to this point. You know, you got to take your hats off to him for having the, the vision there and, and, and with some other coaches. It's important on many levels, but the most important thing is, is the collective now that we can do to help grow with different ideas and everything else. No doubt about it. Hey, really appreciate Thanks, everything Sean. you've Thanks done for, for us. Do. He's yeah. done a fantastic job uh, in the state of Michigan as a coach and certainly as president of the Coaches Association. Coach Fleming, we really appreciate Thanks. the time. All right, we're going to recap the rest of the games that happened here at Eddie Edgar Arena. We circled the Trenton-Salem game yep. in our last podcast. Trenton came out 5-2. to two. Trenton is still rolling. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about this game is it's kind of three games to me because Trenton came out, yeah. I mean, really rolling. Got the fourth check going, scored two goals in, in, what, the first four minutes, and then Salem just clawed their way back into it. Trenton then yeah. pulled away at the yeah. end. I mean, Trenton it, it, clearly yeah. one of the best teams in Division Two, one of the best teams in the state. Props to Salem for not mailing it in early and fighting their way back. But in the end, uh, certainly uh, too much Trojans. They're, uh, they're a team, that, as, I, as I mentioned, but when you talk about the pecking order right now, and, and more on that in a little bit, you have to include the Trojans uh, up at the tippy top of Division Two. All right, so Trent with a 5-2 win over Salem, and I'm here with Chad Clements, the head coach from Trent High School. Thank you for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks for doing this, guys. Talk about the effort your boys had tonight to get this win. Oh, it, was, it was a good effort. It took, it took a full three periods for us to, uh, uh, you know, to complete that game. Um, Ryan does a great job. Uh, with his team and making adjustments. We knew it was going to be a battle. Uh, they're, they're on fire as of late, so uh, we threw everything at them, and uh, fortunately for us, we came up on top. We've been playing well the, the past couple weeks. We still have uh, uh, some little adjustments to make, clean up, you know, clean up our game, but uh, we like the direction that we're headed in right now. Talk about playing in this MIHL KLA showcase. Well, I know David put it together. 
uh, last year, and there was a, a group of them that have talked about it for years, and last year was a, the, the inaugural year that we did it. Uh, we loved it so much. Everyone was totally on board, so it's great to bring two leagues together. I wish we could do more things like this um, to create rivalries. Um, it seems like, uh, you know, it's always very close the games yeah. and uh, and even who's winning so uh, it's just a great atmosphere you get scouts in here yeah. you get to see all these other teams so it's a pretty special thing for uh, high school hockey let's talk about last year talk about the run you guys made to get to the final four for the first time in four years yeah we were uh, we were up and down last year as a hockey team uh, there were times when I thought we were playing very well and then there were other times where uh, you know, we just we weren't competing uh, against some of the bigger teams. And then we got hot, uh, the kids really came together. Uh, that was, I think, the turning point at the end of the season. Uh, we had just come off a, a huge loss to Cranbrook. I think it was eight to one or something. I mean, we really got, uh, we really got beat up. And they just decided, the chemistry just started to work. Uh, we got hot at the right time. Uh, our goaltender played well throughout the playoffs and, and guys started stepping up and making plays. So I guess it just came together at the right time last year. And talk about Joey Cormier, how his game has evolved from, from last year to this year. He's a, a competitor. That's what I always say about him. He, he just thrives on, on competition and uh, you know he's had a great season last year. Uh, he's playing phenomenal again for us. Uh, he gives us a chance every single game uh, to win. So he keeps us in it, uh, keeps it close, and then uh, uh, we, you know the team's got to come come up and uh, support him as well. We have Cam Blanton on our Player of the Year race. Talk about his play at the blue line. Yeah, you know Cam gets a lot of notice for his offensive ability. Uh, he's a great skater. He's got a great shot. Uh, he jumps up into the play uh, very easily. Um, however, he is a, a great defenseman as well. Yeah. Uh, he's a good one-on-one -on -one guy, a shutdown guy. Uh, he can play physical if necessary, so he's got that complete game. Uh, he's def definitely a 200-foot player. Uh, he can, you know, he can play offense, defense, um, and just uh, a guy that you love to have on your team. And just lastly, just what does it mean to you to be a part of this Trenton program, basically all your life? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I got asked this the other day, and uh, you know, growing up as a kid, that was always my dream. It wasn't really to play in the NHL, it wasn't to play college hockey, it was to play high school hockey because my parents took me to the games when I was a little kid and I grew up worshiping these guys and so uh, being a player for three years, it was awesome, being a captain, uh, being able to, to follow in some of those guys' footsteps um, was just a, a special uh, experience for me. And unfortunately enough, I got a job at the, at the school and then I was able to coach and it's been a tremendous 17 years uh, with the program and I just feel very lucky to follow in guys' footsteps like Coach Turner and Coach Howie, uh, who really paved the way, who built the program and made it so special. All right, so Trenton with a 5-2 win over Salem tonight. Thank you very much, Chad, for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. My pleasure again. Thank you guys for doing all you do, you and Sean. Uh, podcast is going awesome. Yeah. We love it. All right, thank you very much. Yep. Cranbrook took on Plymouth. We talked about this game, too, in our last podcast, and Cranbrook, just jumped out on Plymouth and won five to one. Yeah, it was kind of shocking all the way they did it too. I mean, boom, 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 you know, and yeah. Cranbrook's playing some fantastic yeah. hockey right now. And uh, certainly, uh, John, they have uh, reasserted themselves as one of the teams to beat in Division Three if they weren't already. But I, I think they've made a pretty big statement the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, Plymouth is going to be okay. As yeah. I mentioned, this is a team, when you have a younger team, you're going to have the highs and lows. I, I, I still feel that they're going to keep doing this during uh, the course of, of the season. All right, so Cranbo comes out with a 5-1 to win. I'm joined now by Andy Weidenbach, the head coach for Cranbo. Thank you for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So you guys won 5-1 to today. What was your guys' effort to get that victory today? You know, I think we got off to a good start. You know, uh, Plymouth took a couple penalties early. We capitalized on the power play, and, uh, you know, they were trying to play catch up basically the entire game and and I thought uh, after the first period the game kind of evened out but we we definitely got off to a good start now you guys are like a quarter of the way done so far so what have you seen from your team so far this season well it's been a work in progress uh, you know we don't have the super superstars like some of the kids we had in the past like Andrew Miller and and uh, you know uh, Sam Militech or Patrick Brown but but we've got a good group of kids um, the the, the uh, chemistry on the team is really good, and uh, you know we're, we're continuing to get a little bit better each day. So, you know the the the, uh, the team has actually uh, uh, made made a lot of progress since the first day of the season. Now this is the second year of the MIHL KLA Showcase. So, how special is it for you guys to participate in this? 
Well, I, I know David Mitchell is, was instrumental in getting this off the ground, and, and uh, you know, the two leagues are, uh, have some really good teams. Uh, if you look at the rankings, you know, they're bo both leagues uh, are, are putting out some really good teams and some really good players. And, uh, you know, it's kind of Mitch's idea to get this thing going, and, and, it, and it's been a big success, so uh, kudos to him. In a month, it's going to be your showcase, the MIHL showcase. So talk about your guys' showcase. It's something we started, you know, 18 years ago with 12 teams, and uh, the, it, it, it grew uh, to 42 teams, and it's been a real success for high school hockey. We've, we've gotten uh, lots of scouts there to, uh, to watch our players. The, the support we get from the city of Trenton, we got over 150 volunteers, so it's been a big operation, but uh, it's, been, it's been good, and we got most of the kinks out now. You decided to hang it up after this year. So what has it meant to you to be at Cranbrook for the last 26 years? Well, you know, I, I was interviewed recently uh, with, by Marty Budner, and, and one of the things, you know, we ask is, you know, what, what do you think uh, over the last 26 years? And it's, it's just some of the things we did. I mean, you can see the banners hanging in the rink. You know, that's, that's a visual reminder of the success on the ice. But, you know, we did a lot of things off the ice. Our teams raise tens of thousands of dollars in charity games. Uh, we do community service every year down at either Gleaners or Focus Hope. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of good things. Uh, started the uh, MIHL Showcase. Uh, we started VHHA Fall League and, and, and a lot of things for the, for the greater good of hockey. And I think, you know, I'm most proud of that because it impacts more people than just Cranbrook. All right, so Cranville comes out with a 5-1 to win over Plymouth. Thank you very much, Andy, hey, for joining pleasure. us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Absolutely my pleasure, and thanks for everything you do for high school hockey. Another one that took us by surprise was Heartland beating Brother Ice 5-1. to one. Yeah, really surprised at, at that one. You know, um, I, I've seen Heartland a couple times now in person this year, and, and they just, uh, there's no other way to say it, they just went out and, and took care of business. Uh, Brother Rice is certainly better than they showed. Uh, I, I've seen Brother Rice a couple times, and including in this building where they knocked off Stevenson. Brother Rice is still going to be a force to be reckoned with, but listen, uh, Heartland is the champ, and the way they're playing right now, John, I don't think anybody is going to deny that they deserve to be uh, ranked number one in Division Two. All right, so Heartland comes out with a 5-1 victory over Birmingham Brother Rice. I'm joined by Heartland head coach Rick Gadwall. Rick, welcome to the High School Hockey Report. Oh, thank you very much. Great to be here. Talk about your guys' effort tonight. It's first time this year I thought we played three strong periods. Came out with a lot of energy and kept that going the whole time. So I was pleased with our boys' effort tonight. Let's talk about last year. You guys finally won the state championship. What did it mean to you and, and the team to finally bring home the state title to Heartland? I mean, you know, you, you work at that. So, you know, some coaches, some programs, some players uh, never get something like that. And, and we worked a long time. It was seven years. And... Uh, we were really close, knocking on the door several times. So to, to be able to finally get it was just really special for our whole community, our program. Um, you know, and, and you build off stuff like yeah. that. So it was great. So what's your message to the boys this year? You guys are the hunted now. You guys ha have the bullseye on the back. Yeah, you know, it's always competitive every year. I mean, you win, yeah. You, got, you say you got the target on your back. But, um, you know, it's a healthy competition year after year. The big message to our team is just it's a new year. Yeah. Nothing we've done in the past means anything at this point. It's about how we execute now. How special is it to, to play here in the MIHL KLA Challenge? Oh, it's awesome. This is, I mean, second year going. You know, hats off to, to Mitchell and, and Cal Nicky, which I believe got this thing going uh, last year, and uh, all the work that's put in. It's an unbelievable event. Go look at the scout list yeah. and see how many yeah. names we got on there. The NHLs here, yeah. colleges, junior teams, um, and then just the, the atmosphere. It's just awesome. They've done a great job. So Heartland comes out with a 5-1 victory. Thanks to Rick Gadwell for joining us here on the High School Hockey Anytime. Report. Anytime. Thank you. Yep. And in the nightcap, we have the rematch of last year's Division I semifinal between Detroit Catholic Central and Brighton. CC took care of business 4-1 to one over Brighton. Yeah, you know what? I thought it was a heck of a game by Brighton, though. Yeah. I, I really did. And, and, and Brighton, listen, you know by the time the playoffs start, uh, Brighton is, is going to be all right. But Catholic Central, they're just so deep and they're so fast. But I'll tell you, the one thing that jumped out to me, uh, there, there's that tenacity with that Bulldog team. And they showed it here tonight. But heck of a game. So Catholic Central with a 4-1 victory over Brighton tonight, and I'm with uh, Brandon Kalanicki. Uh, welcome to the High School Hockey Report. Thanks for having me. Talk about your guys' effort tonight to get the win over Brighton. I thought our first period was really, really solid. Uh, I felt like we were on the front foot. We were in the offensive zone a lot. 
had a lot of chances to score. Obviously, we got two, and I felt like we were, you know, like I said, after the first period, I, I, I can't ask for too much more out of our guys. And in a situation like that, obviously, a lot of uh, emotion in a uh, in a rivalry game and, you know, a filled barn the way it was tonight. And I thought the second period, you know, we, we were a little sluggish at times, and I think they turned it up a little bit. They kind of found their legs, and, you know, two to one going into the third once again, I, I still felt like we were playing okay, and then the third period, the first shift, obviously, go score a goal. I think that really settled everything down, and I thought the rest of the game we were we were really um, really comfortable. You know, up three one, then made it four one. So that that goal to start the third, I think, really uh, kind of kick started us back up, and I yeah. thought the first and third were really good for us. The second was, you know, a little bit of yeah. you know good and bad. So talk about the the rivalry now between CC and Brighton. It's been in, it's been going the last five years. Just how good it is for high school hockey. Well, we just know every time we play them, it's going to be a good hockey game. And I, I, you know, I think you, when you look at it and you see both teams have had a lot of success in Division One, and we always seem to run into each other in the playoffs. Uh, that just kind of continues to build the rivalry. And doing a game like this is, uh, you know, in this atmosphere is also a lot of fun. Um, you know, like it's again, we you know, it's it's one of those things where year in year out, I, I think you can expect either either team, whether it's their yeah. the best group they've had in years, or if it's a it, it's maybe a down year. You know, when it comes time yeah. to that game, yeah. it's going to be a good hockey game. This is the second year of the MIHL KLA Showcase. How special is it for you guys to participate in this? Well, I think it, I, you know when we we talked about it, and Dave Mitchell was one of the guys who was uh, talking with us about it and you know kind of brought it to our league uh i think we we all jumped at the idea we liked the idea it it created um great games all the way down the list and i think uh, you know regardless of where you're at in your league i think we can look at the other league and say okay there's a very comparable matchup both leagues have had a lot of success in terms of state championships in recent years it, it really creates a great day of hockey, and I think that that's what we were looking for when we did it. And I think we've all been very happy with it, at least from every coach that I've talked to in our league. And it sounds like it's the same on the other side. And I think, uh, you know, it's something that we certainly want to keep doing moving yeah. forward because it, it is a great day. What do you like to see your team improve on as we move forward to the season? Um, I think our consistency. Yeah. I think there are times in games that we've been really, really good. And, and, the, and the sense of urgency as well. I think. You know, once again, you have a good first period. I, I'd like us to see to be able to roll that over, and that was just tonight. I mean, you can yeah. go through the whole games and yeah. see. There's been some games where we've, uh, you know, played more complete games and things like that. But you know, you're, you got to remember you're dealing with high school hockey players, and it's gonna, it's, it's a process, and it's not gonna be yeah. perfect right from the get go. And you just got to keep working to improve on that. And that's one thing, you know, that I, I think certainly we can and handle the ups and downs of the game yeah. a little bit better. You know, there's gonna be some times where you know, you're going to catch a bad bounce or maybe a call doesn't go your way from the officials. You just got to be able to handle that adversity and keep doing the things that you know you should be doing. All right, so Catholic Central with the 4-1 victory over Brighton. Uh, thank you very much, Brandon, for joining us here on the High School Hockey Report. Thank you for having me, John. We'd like to send a special shout out to all the coaches who joined us to, on awesome. our podcast. Thank you. No doubt about it. I mean, it just everybody was great, whether it be just having a conversation or coming over here and, and doing something on camera. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's your thoughts on this showcase for the second year in a row? Well, you know what? I mean, props to the MIHL. You know, they, they, they serve notice again. But I, you know what was great to see? So many fans come out here today, and not just the parents. A lot of the student sections make it out here tonight. So uh, we were treated to some great high school hockey. I mean, there's so many great tournaments like this. And, you know, if we had our way, we'd be out at every yeah. single tournament, uh, no doubt about that. But this was a special day. I mean, and the, to the people that put this all together, and there were so many people behind the scenes uh wow just great stuff out here in livonia and it's time now to reveal our new top 25 rankings
So Sean, Catholic Central and Heartland are still your top two teams. I don't think there's any debate about it. I think if you asked every single coach, they'd probably be unanimous. Yeah. And hey, listen, a lot of hockey to be played and certainly a tournament to be played as well. All right, so that's it for the high school hockey report here from Eddie Egger Ice Arena in Livonia. We're going to take a couple weeks off. We're going to go on a little holiday break, but we're going to be back at the beginning of the new year. Listen, John, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Thank you so much for, for watching and supporting such a great game as well. All right, we'll see you guys in 2019.